guys, so tonight we're going to be talking about the structure of DNA. DNA. Take your DNA. It's all in my DNA. Now, we already know all eukaryotic cells have a nucleus, and all prokaryotic cells have what we call a nucleoid. But what's inside that nucleus and nucleoid? Well, it's genetic information, whether it's free flo floating in the nucleoid or contained in that membrane in the nucleus. The nucleus is called the control center of the cell. And why? Because it contains the DNA. The DNA is the information the cell is going to use the instructions for everything. So what exactly is DNA? Well, we know DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So what's in that deoxyribonucleic acid? Well, we have heritable traits that are included in this information. So these are characteristics that you inherit from your parents, are heritable traits. So whether your eyes are blue or brown, or the shape of your hair, whether it's curly or straight, whether your earlobes are attached, all this information we can get from our parents. And these are your genetics. So your DNA can be divided into sections, and each section is a gene. And a gene, a gene describes something about you. Remember, gene not gene. 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 Okay, so let's look and see what we find in our genes. So we already know our DNA is a nucleic acid, so they are made of nucleotides. And nucleotides are the monomers of DNA, of that macromolecule. The monomer, the smaller molecule, is our nucleotide. So DNA is two strands of nucleotides attached at the center by hydrogen bonds, like rungs on a ladder. So in each of these nucleotides, we have three important parts. First, we have our phosphate group and a sugar. And the sugar is called a pentose because it has five carbons around it, kind of looks like the pentagon. And then we have a nitrogen base. So this is our nucleotide, a phosphate group, a sugar, and our nitrogen base. So if we look at our macromolecule DNA up close, we can see that our phosphate and our sugar are going to form the entire backbone of the molecule. And our different base pairs, whether A, G, T, or C, are going to link up with other base pairs in the center. And so we have a double-stranded molecule. Now if we look closely, we're going to see that the entire macromolecule of DNA is constructed by lots and lots of nucleotides. So one nucleotide is one phosphate, one sugar, and one nitrogen base. So you can see here is one nucleotide, or down here this is one nucleotide. Now let's go over our nitrogen bases. Okay, so what are those base pairs again? We have adenine and guanine, and cytosine and thymine. Adenine starts with an A, guanine starts with a G, cytosine starts with a C, and thymine starts with a T. So we use those letters to represent the different base pairs, A, G, C, and T. Technically, A and G are what we call purines, and C and T are what we call pyridines. Pyridines, purines, pyridines, purines. So when they bind, they're only going to bind with certain kinds of base pairs. So A is only going to bind with T, adenine only binding with thymine, and C is only binding with G. Cytosine only binds with guanine. Now, in between these two base pairs are going to be hydrogen bonds, remember. And adenine is binding with thymine with two hydrogen bonds, whereas cytosine binds with guanine with three hydrogen bonds. So remember, two in between A and T, and three in between C and G. So DNA has a structure that we call anti-parallel. DNA is anti-parallel, meaning that each side is the opposite of each other. So with the first strand, we start at an end called five prime. This part is called five prime, and at the bottom here, this end is called three prime. Now the five prime end always starts with this phosphate, and the three prime end always ends with the sugar. So because it's anti-parallel, the five prime is down here on the other side with our phosphate, and our three prime is going to be at the top up there. So you can see it's backwards. This side goes 5 prime to 3 prime, but this side goes 3 prime to 5 prime, or 5 to 3, like that. You can also see again how the different base pairs match with each other. So A always goes with T, and vice versa, and G always goes with C, as well as vice versa. 
So the sequence of your nucleotides is actually going to determine your genes. It tells you what you look like, it tells you how your body's going to function. So how do we find out what DNA looks like? Well, nucleotides are attached in, the, in a chain, and DNA is in two chains with hydrogen bonds linking them in the center. So these hydrogen bonds linking the base pairs create when the DNA is wound up, what we call our double helix. So DNA was discovered by two scientists, and the scientists who are credited with it are called Watson and Crick, um, but their work was actually based on another scientist's work named Rosalind Franklin, and we'll hopefully hear more about her story later this week. Okay, so make sure your notes are complete, and we'll see you tomorrow.